Chapter 71 Circumstances of the Xiao Clan After sitting for nearly an hour, a pretty maid finally walked in. Her two hands carried a silver tray, and in the center of the tray was a faint red ring. Taking the silver tray and sending back the maid, Ya Fei personally handed over the goods to Xiao Yan and smilingly said, Old sir, the cauldron as well as all the alchemic ingredients you need are all in the storage ring. Extending a hand to pick up the storage ring, Xiao Yan let it roll about in his palm then faintly nodded. Yao Lao's voice also sounded out at just the right time, okay. After refining the qi gathering pill, I will bring it to you. Ya Fei's pretty eyes were filled with delight as She hastily nodded. All right, there's no need for you to send me out. I'll go out by myself. Waving his hand, Xiao Yan took the ring and slid it onto his finger. Then, without even turning back, he headed towards the back of the parlor and went out. On the table, the blue jade card was still there as he did not want to owe the people too much. Thus, he had just left it there. Staring at the receding figure leaving through the door, Ya Fei nibbled her red lips, then stepped forward to take the blue jade card into her hand. Musing a bit, she asked in a clear voice, Uncle Gu and I, to refine a qi gathering pill, the success rate is not that high right? Yes. It's said that even Pill King Wang Gu He's success rate for refining qi gathering pills is only around 7 out of 10. For normal 4th tier alchemists, the success rate is only around 5 out of 10, Gu and I said in a low voice. But this old sir, he succeeds in refining on the first try, Ya Fei said as she knitted her thin black brows. Who knows, maybe his luck is good, Gu and I shook his head and didn't care too much about the matter. After all, for alchemists, luck was a big factor in successfully refining pills. If one's luck was good, even when continuously refining several times, one would not fail. Could it be that he's not just a fourth-tier alchemist? Ya Fei asked with hesitation after pondering a bit. XT. Haha, <laughs> how is that possible? The number of fifth-tier alchemists in Jiuma Empire can be counted on one's hands. At that sort of status, even if it was the Empire or great forces like the Misty Cloud faction, they would all view this person as a VIP. Why would such a person come to our own auction house to auction pills? Gu and I laughed. At this, Ya Fei also slightly nodded her head and let out a sigh, bitterly laughing, it seems that I don't have enough experience. I'm afraid that my previous hesitation negatively impacted this mysterious alchemist's favorable impression of us by a large amount. You can't blame yourself for this. That kind of huge transaction, even I wouldn't dare to answer easily. That you are capable to this extent is already very good. In regards to our relations with that alchemist, in the future, just take your time and get along amiably. As long as he does not develop any sort of ill will towards us then it's fine. Gu and I said comfortingly. Forcing a smile to her face as she nodded, Ya Fei sat lethargically on the chair, revealing her figure. As her lovely eyes blinked, having some doubts, she softly asked, What does he intend to do with so many low-grade medicine ingredients? Those medicine ingredients have the effect of stopping bleeding and strengthening bones. I think he should be planning to manufacture healing medicine. Gu and I muttered as his eyebrows pursed together. Similarly puzzled he said, but with his status, why would he manufacture these cheaply priced healing medicine? Hearing this, Ya Fei's beautiful eyes slightly narrowed, her long fingernails lightly tapped on the table. A moment later, realization dawned upon her, she softly said, Looks like this old sir seems to be very caring towards the Xiao clan. Eyebrows wrinkled tightly together, Gu Ni's expression suddenly changed into one of amazement, are you saying that he wants to give the Xiao clan healing medicine? Recently I've heard that the Jialai clan had invited over a first-tier alchemist. The cheap return of spring powder has already snatched away half of the city's crowds, if the Xiao clan does not act soon, I'm afraid that their marketplaces will end up embarrassingly empty. Ya Fei eyes darted around as she voiced out her conclusion, smugly smiling she continued to explain, previously, the old sir had already said that if there was a chance, 
he would see O operate with the Xiao clan and buying so many healing ingredients at this time could only mean one thing, he meant what he said. Ha, looks like the Xiao clan has really lucked out this time, while the Jialai clan is going to be in trouble. Having listened to Yafei's analysis, Gu Nai grinned. An envious look was on his face since obtaining the help of a fourth-tier alchemist was not something just any clan could receive. Slightly inclining her head, Yafei gave an easy smile as she said, We should also make some contact with the Xiao clan soon, though adding a flower to a bracelet will make one somewhat happy, providing help when one needs it the most is a much better way of strengthening both parties' ties. Gu Nai approvingly nodded his head, with a fourth-tier alchemist behind them, ties with the Xiao clan were now important. Exiting the auction house, as usual, Xiao Yan prudently turned round and round the streets for at least half a day before finally taking off his disguise in a desolate alley. Tossing and catching the light red storage ring in his hand, Xiao Yan was somewhat happy. This kind of storage ring was made by a type of uncommon material called storage stone. The characteristic of this material was that there was a unique small space within it where any lifeless objects could be stored. Though this was extremely convenient, due to the sparsity of the storage stone, its was extremely precious. The lowest grade storage ring in Xiao Yan's hands only had a space of about 3 to 4 square meters, yet it costs almost 100,000 gold. In the Xiao clan, Xiao Yan had only seen his father and the first elder own storage rings. Xiao Yan fiddled with the storage ring for a while, hesitatingly examining it. In the end he did not wear it but rather carefully stored it in his bosom. This kind of ring was considerably pricey, if it was seen by his father or others, he would have a hard time explaining how he came to obtain it. Xiao Yan kicked the black mantle into the gutter before carefully walking out of the desolate alley. Afterwards he quickly dashed back to his clan. As Xiao Yan followed the lane that passed through the clan home, he heard his father's furious voice from meeting room. Eyelids twitching, Xiao Yan moved forward to secretly peer through a crack in the door. Damn it, Jialai Bai that bastard is too much, he actually dared to brazenly steal our business. Within the room, Xiao Zhan was currently raging as he pounded on the table. Tea from the teacups spilled all over the table. Presently, the marketplaces of the Xiao clan had already lost a great amount of traffic. The merchants left in the marketplace are also very worried and frightened. A few of them have even secretly left for the Jialai clan's marketplaces. If this continues, in another half a month I am afraid that our marketplace will go bankrupt. The second elder said with a gloomy face as he gnashed his teeth together in fury. How about? I bring a few of our clan's elites and secretly deal with that alchemist. The third elder's gaze were ferocious as he suggested this in a dark tone. There are at least two Dadoshi protecting the alchemist, it won't be so easy. Xiao Zhan helplessly said as he moved his hands to and fro. But if we continue in this manner, our losses will be too great. The profits from the marketplaces of Wutan City is a large part of the total revenue of our Xiao clan. The third elder was somewhat unwilling to back down. The corners of Xiao Zhan's mouth twitched. At the moment, he could not think of any good ideas. That day at the auction, didn't that mysterious alchemist say that there might come an opportunity where he would work with us? Seeing how Gu and I was so respectful towards him, his tier as an alchemist is definitely not low. If he could help us, then that Jialai clan would definitely lose out. The first elder, who had been silent up until now, suddenly spoke up in a soft voice. AI, who knows if he just randomly blabbered. For people of that kind of status, what kind of benefits would they get out of cooperating with us? For such little profit, would they even care? Xiao Zhan laughed bitterly and shook his head as he sat on the chair and sighed. The three elders were all silent as well. Indeed, it was a bit challenging for the Xiao clan to establish connections with people of such status. Fuck. We'll bear it for a few more days. If the Jialai clan still does not practice restraint then don't blame us for retaliating no matter the costs. Licking his lips, Xiao Zhan gripped onto the chair frame as an ominous glint flashed across his eyes. Outside the door, 
listening up till here, Xiao Yan faintly shrugged his shoulders as his hand played with the storage ring at his chest. Letting out a cold smirk, he slowly left. Chapter 72 Learning to Refine Medicine Xiao Yan left the meeting room and returned to his room to make some final preparations to refine some healing medicine. Once he was done with his preparations, he stealthily snuck back to his desolate cave, the one he previously trained in. As Yao Lao had said before, it was important to not be disturbed during the medicine refinement process and given the great number of clan members, this would be difficult to accomplish at home. If by chance something, like Xiao Yu bargaining on him, was to happen, Xiao Yan would be unable fully bear with the consequences. Sneakily stepping into the cave, Xiao Yan was itching to get started, so he quickly fished out the storage ring from his bosom and pushed a stream of Dou Qi into it. The light red ring emitted a flicker of light before a roughly half-meter long red medicine cauldron poofed into existence within the cave. The entire medicine cauldron was a dark crimson red and it gave off a slight glow. There were two malevolent-looking snake heads carved beneath the cauldron, their gaping maws forming two connected cavities for air to enter into the cauldron. As the two cavities wound and extended deep into the cauldron, the diameter grew smaller and smaller. If one were to try to look in, they would barely be able to see anything. At the apex of the medicine cauldron was a dark crimson-red cauldron lid forged in the shape of a giant serpent. Besides the lid, there was also a special hole for ingredients to enter. The top of the cauldron lid was littered with many fine holes made by ice silver. These had the effect of dissipating heat to prevent excessive heat from building up, which might lead to an explosion. On one side a transparent screen of essence ice was installed at the middle part of the medicine cauldron so that the whole refining process could be clearly seen by the alchemist. The surface cauldron was engraved with the forms of wild untamed devil beasts that seemed to almost leap off the cauldron. Observing the beautiful appearance of the medicine cauldron, Xiao Yan nodded his head in satisfaction. Xiao Yan rubbed the ancient black ring, and Yao Lao appeared with a flash of light. N, it's a cauldron with two outlets. For an alchemic amateur like you, it's not bad at all. Yao Lao said indifferently as he cast a glance at the orifices of the snakes on the dark crimson red medicinal cauldron. A cauldron with two outlets. Hearing the unfamiliar term, Xiao Yan's eyes blinked as he looked on doubtfully. Medicinal cauldrons also have their own set of tiers. The more outlets for fire a cauldron's furnace has, the higher tier a medicinal cauldron is and thus the rarer it is. Don't assume that one can just randomly make a few holes to add another few outlets. Outsiders don't even have a hint of discernment for the mysteries of these outlets. Outlets are the essence of a medicinal cauldron, and require extreme precision to polish to perfection. If one were made with even the slightest error, the whole medicinal cauldron would be considered junk. As such, the more outlets a medicinal cauldron has, the better the auxiliary effect is for an alchemist when refining. Of course, if you wish to control multiple outlets, you need very high soul perception. For the current you, to control two fire outlets is already the limit. Yao Lao laughed as he explained. For an alchemist, the importance of a good medicine cauldron is akin to that of a good sword to a warrior. Giving an almost indiscernible nod, Xiao Yan stared at this big cauldron in front of him and asked a bit blankly, Now what should I do? For now it'd be better if you'd familiarize yourself with the medicinal cauldron. Press one hand against an outlet, and then rouse the Dou Qi within you and channel it inside. Yao Lao sat cross-legged within the cave as he directed Xiao Yan. Nodding his head, Xiao Yan placed a hand on the outlet and slowly closed his eyes. Within his body, a revolving, dim and yellowish Qi slightly rippled. Dim, yellow Dou Qi bubbled out strand by strand consequently making the palm of his hand glow with a yellow light. Once that dim, yellow dochi reached his palm, it grew still. Then, as if it had encountered an abrupt and violent gravitational pull, it suddenly flooded out of his hand and passed into the outlet, drilling into the medicinal cauldron. P.U. There was a muffled noise, then after the dim, yellow chi had transferred through the fire outlet and unexpectedly transformed into a dim, yellow flame essence. Within the medicinal cauldron, 
it flickered and blazed. The fact that his palm suddenly spit out fire, alarmed Xiao Yan and almost made him reflexively withdraw his hand. However, after sensing that his palm was cool, he panicked substantially less. N, not bad. On your first try, you've already succeeded in producing a flame. Observing the roiling flame within the medicinal cauldron, Yao Lao nodded and said in a low voice, the flame that you've mustered together this time isn't actually the refining flame. Right now you should concentrate on controlling the trace of wood element within your body and pour it into the medicine cauldron. Xiao Yan complied by closing both eyes. Bit by bit, his thoughts focused as his outstanding spiritual perception continuously scanned his body for that light trace of wood element. After more than ten minutes, Xiao Yan finally found the wood element in his body for the first time. He let out a sigh of relief as he opened his eyes. Found it. Seeing Xiao Yan opening his eyes, Yao Lao asked, astonished. As the former nodded his head, Yao Lao could not help but inwardly praise Xiao Yan. When Yao Lao first found the wood element in his body, it had took him almost half an hour. From this it can be seen how strong Xiao Yan's spiritual perception is. Xiao Yan stretched out a finger to lightly press on the other fire outlet. Little by little, a stream of extremely weak green qi flowed in. Just as the green qi entered the medicine cauldron, the light yellow flame within abruptly calmed down, as if there had been a chemical reaction. At this moment, even though Xiao Yan had not yet been able to control the flame, he could feel that the franticness within the flame had been tamed by the wood element. Furthermore, due to the principle that wood gives birth fire, the flame at this time was much more controlled and would last longer than before. Good, satisfied, Yao Lao nodded his head as he reached out a finger to touch Xiao Yan's forehead, transferring information directly into the latter's head. This is my own healing medicine formula, you can use it for practice. I will guide you through as I warn you about the temperature of the flame and the composition of medical ingredients to refine. Xiao Yan squinted as he processed the new information in his head as he slightly inclined his head to acknowledge. Blood clotting powder, one stalk of blood clotting grass, one lively fruit, two poppy flowers. After Xiao Yan committed to memory the amount of each required alchemy ingredients, his spiritual perception gradually channeled into the medicinal cauldron as he diligently tried to control the mild flame. Making a flicking motion with his finger over the ring, a dark red stalk of blood clotting grass appeared in his palm. A little while later, Xiao Yan threw the stalk into the maw of the engraved serpent at the apex of the cauldron. Once the blood clotting grass was thrown in, Xiao Yan did not control the flame in time. The fire simply blazed upwards and in the blink of an eye, the stalk of blood clotting grass turned into a pile of ash and the cauldron's unique mechanism expelled it out of the cauldron. Looking at this first failure, Xiao Yan laughed with a bit of embarrassment. Continue. Yao Lao indifferently said. Swallowing a mouthful of saliva, Xiao Yan once again threw in a stalk of blood clotting grass. This time, the blood clotting grass persisted within the fire for a while but as before, it turned into a pile of ashes. The temperature is too high. Xiao Yan wiped his sweat away. Now that he personally tried to refine a pill, Xiao Yan finally realized that this type of work, as expected, could not be easily accomplished by just any person. After continuously burning up a whole twenty or so stalks of blood clotting grass, with some difficulty, Xiao Yan finally had a grasp on the most suitable temperature for blood clotting grass. Again tossing in a stalk of blood clotting grass, Xiao Yan's expression grew solemn as his spiritual perception firmly suppressed the temperature of the flame. His eyes passed through the ice essence and unwaveringly fixated on the stalk of blood clotting grass suspended within the flame. The flame seethed about for a period of time and the blood clotting grass finally started to shed its layer of skin and the juice accumulated within its leaves gradually began to evaporate into specks of faint, white powder. The essence of the blood clotting grass had finally been successfully refined by this greenhorn, Xiao Yan. Chapter 73 First Refinement In the narrow cave the flames within the cauldron casted shadows onto the cavern walls, creating shadows of dancing fangs and claws of wild beasts. 
Xiao Yan concentrated with every fiber of his being as he watched the surging flame attentively, his pale face was streaked with beads of sweat. Refining medicine for long periods of time was a task that consumed an extreme amount of dou qi. Since Xiao Yan's qi method was the lowest ranked lo xian, his qi foundations and endurance were nothing special. Thus it was not an easy task for him to persevere for almost two hours in front of the cauldron. Yao Lao squinted his eyes as he gazed upon Xiao Yan, who had once again successfully refined a blood clot grass into a fine white powder. Knowing that Xiao Yan had already reached his limit, Yao Lao gave a slight nod and gently said, Well done, take a break. Hearing this, Xiao Yan's shoulders immediately dropped and his body softly fell to lie on the ice-cold floor as if all the energy in his body had been suddenly drained away. Gasping for air, his chest rose and fell rapidly, battered with exhaustion, he could barely even lift a finger now. Training now would give the best effect. Yao Lao said indifferently as he cast a glance towards the Xiao Yan who lifelessly laid on the ground. Laziness and diligence clashed in the heart for a mere moment before Xiao Yan internally howled in anguish as he unwilling sat up. His trembling hands formed into a training seal as he slowly closed his eyes. Seeing Xiao Yan's stance, Yao Lao laughed as his sight turned towards the ten plus jade cases before the cauldron. These cases were filled to the brim with pale white powder refined from the blood clot grass and were results of the efforts of Xiao Yan. From left to right, the pale white color of the powder became richer and richer until the last case, in which the color of the powder had almost reached a pure white. Gazing upon this extremely obvious improvement, Yao Lao felt pleasantly surprised as he nodded his head approvingly, in his heart he once again praised Xiao Yan's outstanding spiritual perception. He shot a glance towards the Xiao Yan who was currently recovering his Dou Qi before sitting himself cross-legged against the stone wall leisurely closing his eyes to recuperate. Xiao Yan had only refined the first type of ingredient, there were still two more types waiting for him to slowly practice on. After training close-eyed for almost an hour, the qi cyclone within Xiao Yan's body once again emitted a bright light after it had previously gone dark from the depletion of Dou Qi before. Furthermore, the brightness this time seemed to be a little bit clearer than it was a few hours before. Gradually opening his eyes, the powerless feeling from before had retreated by more than half. Stretching his neck, the cracking sounds made Xiao Yan sigh in happiness. Done training? Continue then. Yao Lao smiled as he opened his eyes to look upon the now lively Xiao Yan. Bitterly laughing as he shook his head, Xiao Yan who had experienced the painful process of alchemy had finally understood that he had been conned by Yao Lao. When Yao Lao had previously done alchemy, all he did was twirl his hands about as he refined the ingredients to create the elixirs that people would go crazy for. This simple looking process had left a strong impression in Xiao Yan's mind that alchemy was extremely easy. Yet now that Xiao Yan had tried a hand at it personally, he now knew that alchemy was more difficult than being a miner. This understanding had come too late, thus Xiao Yan could only sigh as he once more sat before the cauldron and started to refine the essence of the other two types of medical ingredients. Equipped with the previous experience of refining blood clot grass, Xiao Yan, this time, was clearly much more relaxed than before. After burning eight lively fruits and ten poppy flowers, he finally managed to extract the components needed to make the healing medication. From the lively fruit, an almost fully black and small kernel was obtained. This kernel had the effect of improving blood circulation. If an experienced mercenary was injured in the wilderness while lacking healing medication, oftentimes, he would grind a lively fruit and use it to alleviate the injury. From the poppy flower, a light red liquid was obtained. This kind of fluid had a numbing effect and can be used to relieve pain. Eyeing the three medicines which had been arranged neatly in front of Xiao Yan, Yao Lao nodded slightly and quietly said, All of the required ingredients have been refined, now fuse their medical abilities together. This is the most important step in alchemy. With a deep sigh, Xiao Yan respectfully nodded. Proficiently throwing the pure white powder into the cauldron, he smoked it under a warm fire for about 10 minutes until the pure white powder turned slightly reddish before speedily pouring the poppy flower liquid in two. 
just as the liquid entered the cauldron, it wrapped around the pure white powder. Boiling for a short time in the flame, the two ingredients slowly fused into a light, red and viscous liquid. His spiritual perception strove to control the temperature of the flame as the viscous, light red liquid was slowly smoked. As it was continuously baked above the flame, the viscous liquid gradually changed into a dark red paste. Through the transparent lens, Xiao Yan stared unwaveringly at the dark red paste within the cauldron. Slightly hesitating, he finally threw in the tiny black kernel from the lively fruit. Though the tiny black kernel entered the cauldron, nothing happened. The tiny kernel bounced about in the flame, refusing to fuse into the dark red paste. Different ingredients have different resistances to temperature, so you need to learn how to control the temperature of any part of the flame. In areas that require a low temperature, you have to suppress the flame while in areas that require high temperature, you have relax your control to increase the temperature of the flame, Yao Lao lectured as he gazed upon Xiao Yan who was perspiring in worry. Xiao Yan licked his dry lips as he nodded. He promptly divided a part of his spiritual perception to exert control over the flame below the tiny kernel to gradually increase its temperature. Bang! As the spiritual perception relaxed its control over the temperature, a single uncontrolled flame fiercely soared up and burned half of the tiny black kernel to ashes in an instant, causing Xiao Yan to break out in cold sweat as he hastened to desperately suppress the flame. One part of his spiritual perception had to maintain the temperature of one side of the flame while another part had to increase the temperature of the other side of the flame. This kind of multitasking caused a headache for Xiao Yan. However, after going through a few more perilous situations, Xiao Yan finally calmed down from his flustered state. He wiped away the sweat that had gathered on his forehead as he sighed deeply before concentrating the rest of his dou qi into the fire outlet. Within the cauldron, the tiny black kernel could no longer bear it and finally ruptured under the increasing temperature of the flame. Fine jet black powder gradually floated into the light red paste and dyed the latter in a deeper shade of color. As the last pinch of jet black powder floated into the paste, Xiao Yan finally let out a long sigh. His hands slowly separated from the fire outlet and the flame within the cauldron gradually died down. At the sight of the panting Xiao Yan, Yao Lao faintly smiled as he waved his hand, lifting the cauldron lid and settling it onto the floor. With his right hand, he willed the huge lump of crimson red paste to leap up, where it remained floating in midair. Yao Lao glanced at the crimson red paste which was emitting a strong medicine smell. His hands made cutting motions in the air as the dark red paste was cut into at least a hundred tiny pieces. Taking the storage ring from Xiao Yan, Yao Lao flicked it as over a hundred small jade bottles suddenly spread out all over the narrow cave. After arranging the jade bottles, Yao Lao waved his hand again as the liquid-like paste in the air accurately landed into the jade bottles. Randomly choosing a jade bottle, Yao Lao smiled as he passed it over to Xiao Yan while bantering, Congratulations, your first attempt at alchemy was a success. Impatiently receiving the jade bottle, Xiao Yan gazed at the slightly impure crimson red fluid within while in his heart feelings of excitement and pride welled up. Haha, from this point on, I can also be considered an alchemist. Chapter 74 Turning Up Uninvited As several days passed, Xiao Yan spent nearly every day beside the cauldron. Although these days were extremely exhausting, the storage ring, which was full of healing medicine, made him feel gratified as he rested. Of course, another thing to be mentioned was that after almost five days of continuous alchemy, the Dou Qi in Xiao Yan's body unknowingly became much more powerful. Judging by his current progress, he had almost reached the one-star Dou Zhe level. With these two pieces of good news, Xiao Yan managed to grit his teeth and survive the ordeal. As Xiao Yan hid in the cave to painstakingly refine medicine, the situation in Wutan City continued to unravel. The atmosphere between Xiao and Jialai clans had become increasingly strained, just two days ago the Jialai clan took the opportunity to come up with various market rules that favored merchants, causing a large portion of the merchants who had originally been observing from the sidelines to begin moving to the marketplaces of the Jialai clan. Faced with a measure that was obviously aimed to rock the foundations of the Xiao clan, 
all of the high-ranking members of the Xiao clan came to be possessed by a violent rage that threatened to evolve into a murderous intent. God damn it, I can't take it anymore, in a mere five days, our Xiao clan has lost at least 50% to 60% of its profits, if this continues all of our marketplaces will go bankrupt. Within the clan meeting room, the third elder exclaimed in anger, an ominous glint on his face. All the higher position clan members were seated within the huge hall, the fury in their hearts was expressed by their gloomy complexions. This truly cannot drag out any further, the first elder slowly spat out each word, continuing, he said, although Master Gu Nai from Primer Auction House has aided us by manufacturing over a hundred bottles of healing medicine, this amount is too little, it is completely incomparable to the massive amount from the Jialai clan. Although we might be able to maintain a deadlock with the Jialai clan in the short run, in the long run, as those healing medicines run out, we would once again arrive at the awkward situation before. The first elder sighed before letting out a bitter laugh and saying, although if Gu Nai was willing to fully support us, based on quantity, we would definitely be able to drag it out with the first tier alchemist from the Jialai clan. However, he is from Primer Auction House after all, they seldom involve themselves in the clash of clans. To have helped to such an extent is already very unexpected. Seated in the leader's chair, Xiao Zhan nodded his head, a gloomy look on his face. Though the quality of the healing medicine that the Jialai clan sold was low, the quantity was vast and the price was cheap. This suited the preferences of the mercenaries, who were often caught in bloody situations. If we could also get a first-tier alchemist, we would be able to contend against them, in the big hall someone lamented. Hearing this, Xiao Zhan helplessly shook his head. There were only a few alchemists in Wutan City, to woo any one of those arrogant chaps was easier said than done. This time, the Jialai clan had struck the lottery and actually received an alchemist's help. In the corner of the hall, Xiao Yu, Xiao Ning, and the other members of the younger generation of the clan were also present. As they gazed upon the gloomy expressions on their elders, they did not dare carelessly interrupt and so they endured the stifling atmosphere in silence. Older sister, is that first-tier alchemist really so strong? How could he have forced our Xiao clan into this situation? Somewhat unable to tolerate the oppressive atmosphere, Xiao Ning quietly inquired Xiao Yu who sat beside him. Xiao Yu softly sighed, letting out a bitter laugh, she answered softly, Indeed, the alchemist is a very unique profession. The strength of a first-tier alchemist is at best in the doja level and in a straightforward battle any of the elders in the clan could easily kill him. Yet the true terror of an alchemist is not in direct battle but rather that they are able to create elixirs that people go crazy for. With these elixirs, they possess the incomparable ability to rally supporters. Many strong practitioners are willing to serve under an alchemist for the sake of obtaining these elixirs. On the Dochi continent, many people compare an alchemist to a poisonous wasp's nest, once prodded, an alchemist would immediately gather an uncountable number of fighters. Faced with so many fighters, even if they are unable to kill you, they would still be able to tire you to death. As Xiaoning imagined the scene of being surrounded by fighters, he trembled as an envious look spread across his face. Don't be delusional, you should know about the harsh requirements to become an alchemist. The chances are even smaller than a meat pie dropping from the heavens. Rolling her eyes at Xiao Ning, Xiao Yu mercilessly splashed cold water over him. Set back by Xiao Yu's words, Xiao Ning dispiritedly curled his lip as he said, I'm afraid that our entire Xiao clan does not have the fortune to come up with an alchemist. Although Xiao Yu nodded in agreement to these words, in her mind a certain youth dressed in black garments abruptly popped up. Looking closely at the features of the youth, it seemed to be Xiao Yan. Ruthlessly flinging away the thought, Xiao Yu whispered to herself in her heart, How could I have thought of that little bastard? Humph, if someone with that kind of personality is able to become an alchemist, all of the alchemists in this world would be worthless. After cursing Xiao Yan in her heart, Xiao Yu willed her gaze towards a corner by the window, there, a green-clothed young maiden was quietly clasping a thick and simple book, occasionally moving her finger to flip a page as her eyes scanned the contents of the book. 
This tranquil and elegant appearance drew the furtive gazes of many of her peers. Such a good girl, why must she favor that little bastard? Xiao Yu grudgingly shook her head as she once again maintained her silence. Quietly sitting beside the window, although her attention was on the book, Sun Er was able to sense the depressing atmosphere in the hall. Her willowy eyebrows slightly knitted together. No matter what was said, she had also stayed in the Xiao clan for over ten years. Moreover, even if it was not for Xiao Yan, she would never let the Xiao clan be beaten by the Jialai clan that badly. Ha! Huh. I hope that those bastards won't go overboard, Sun Er sighed in her heart as she once again turned back to her book. With no Xiao Yan by her side, she practically had no reason to speak. As the plans continued to be discussed within the hall, a clan guard hurriedly ran in and reported in a respectful tone, Clan leader, there is a person dressed in a black cloak outside. He says that he has some collaboration matters to discuss with the clan leader. At these words, Xiao Zhan and the rest of the elders were slightly shocked. Mutually exchanging glances, their once gloomy expressions suddenly soared with ecstasy. A few of them simultaneously stood up together and urgently ordered, quickly invite him in. Spotting the looks on Xiao Zhan and the three elders, everyone in the hall was somewhat amazed, immediately exchanging glances with one another. Haha! <laughs> no need to invite me in. Clan leader Xiao, how have you been? This old man has come uninvited. Yao Lao's clear laughter resounded from beyond the door just as the sound of Xiao Zhan's order faded. Along with the laugher, a figure shrouded by a large black mantle unhurriedly walked into the hall under the crowd's stare. At the instant when the person dressed in a black gown stepped through the door, Sun Er, who had all along submersed herself in her book, suddenly raised her eyebrows. Gradually lifting her small face, her autumn water eyes vigilantly stared at the black cloaked person who had just entered. Chapter 75 Big Business Staring at the man wearing a black cloak who had just entered, Xiao Zhan and the three elders promptly welcomed him, advancing with quick steps, Xiao Zhan showed a respectful smile and said, Most esteemed guest, forgive me for I have been rather busy with the matters of the clan and was unable to come out to greet you Xiao Zhan, please forgive me. Haha, <laughs> no need to be so formal. Under the black mantle, an aged voice rang out. Xiao Zhan eagerly nodded and gave a meaningful glance to the three elders, hinting them to promptly open up the path and said with a smile, Please sit, most esteemed guest. The man covered by a black cloak nodded and without being overly formal, directly walked up and sat on the seat next to the head of the table. Seeing how respectfully Xiao Zhan was treating the man in the black cloak, the youths of the clan couldn't help but whisper among themselves. Myriads of curious glances unceasingly swept over that black-cloaked man but upon hearing the elder say that he was an alchemist, their eyes suddenly became filled with ardor, and full of worship. No matter where, alchemists were the ones that had the most respected profession in the eyes of others. Sister, this person, isn't he the mysterious alchemist we saw during the auction the other day? Xiao Ning's two eyes fixed on this man dressed in a black cloak as he tugged at Xiao Yu's sleeve eagerly asking her. Yet. Xiao Yu slowly nodded, her beautiful eyes were still staring at this silhouette covered by a black mantle, as her lovely face showed a slight expression of pleasant surprise, I didn't think that this honorable sir would really come to our Xiao clan, it looks like what he said last time about cooperating with us wasn't just lip service. If we really obtain his help, the Xiao clan should be able to go through this predicament with ease. Hearing the whispers from the people around her, Sun Er wrinkled her brows and fixed her crystal clear eyes tightly at the stocky man in the black mantle. She didn't know why, but she felt that the man's gestures, his speech and his manners were not exactly harmonious. After knitting her brows while pondering for a long time, Sun Er could only helplessly renounce this idea. Haha, sir, what brings you here? Personally preparing a cup of tea? Xiao Yan asked with a smile. I was passing in the neighborhood, so I thought I'd come to visit your noble clan. I brought with me a few foundation elixirs that should be able to foster a good amount of youths from your side. Under this black gown, the elder's voice was quite joyous. 
Having heard him, Xiao Zhan hurried to look around but didn't see the faintest trace of Xiao Yan. He couldn't help but bitterly smile. Haha, the Xiao family head doesn't need to call him out, I have already met the young master, a quite fine youth, he's quite to this old man's liking, waving his hands, he stopped Xiao Zhan from calling someone to get Xiao Yan. The tone of the black-cloaked man was filled with a touch of admiration that he didn't conceal and made the youth hidden under the cloak quite embarrassed. Hearing the black-cloaked man's tone filled with admiration, the eyes of everyone in the hall were filled with envy. To get such a high evaluation from such an high-level alchemist wasn't something that was easy to come by. All the good stuff happens only to this brat. As he twitched his mouth, full of unwillingness, Xiaoning's tone was full of envy. Xiao Yu, completely helpless, sighed, her jade-like hands on her cheeks, she silently whispered, Is that brat so good? How come I never realized it before? Hearing the compliment, Xiao Zhan's face revealed a huge smile and in his eyes, a glimpse of pride could faintly be seen. Xiao clan leader, I recently heard that your clan was facing hardships, right? Xiao Zhan's smile hadn't stretched out completely before it was struck down by the oppressive voice of Yao Lao. Nodding in agreement, Xiao Zhan smiled bitterly, surely this sir knows our Xiao clan's current situation, right? MHH, I know a bit about it. Nodding, the black cloaked man revealed a smile. AI, in the current Xiao clan, our business is already no more than half than what it was in the past. In the long term, I'm afraid that our influence is also going to sink down to that of a second-rate clan. Xiao Zhan sighed in regret, wrinkling his brows. He seemed to age a few years at that particular moment. Haha, <laughs> even though I am not so close with Xiao clan, I am getting along quite well with your son. If you, Xiao clan leader, are not afraid that this old man may have some bad intentions, how about cooperating together? The black-cloaked man smiled gently. Having heard him, Xiao Zhan was startled at first but soon became wildly joyful, that was all he was what he was waiting for. He gave a look full of excitement to the three elders and soon after, nodded without the slightest hesitation, Sir, we want to cooperate with you, we'd love to in fact. The assistance of an alchemist above the second tier was something that Xiao clan could not even dream of. Xiao Zhan didn't think that his own clan had something that could interest a second-tier alchemist and hearing the alchemist's words, that he would cooperate with the Xiao clan, Xiao Zhan deduced that the reason of the alchemist helping should be because of Xiao Yan. With such an opportunity, Xiao Zhan would be fighting to get the chance. Seeing Xiao Zhan's approval, the black-cloaked man nodded and a white palm appeared from the cloak. On his finger was a red-colored ring and with a flick, it immediately flickered in red light. Staring at his palm, as white as a youth's, Xiao Zhan was shocked. The palm gave him a, familiar feeling. But Xiao Zhan didn't have the time to ponder about the cause of his sensation of deja vu, immediately, a pile of jade bottles appeared on the table. The huge table was, in a blink of eye, entirely covered with little jade bottles, there wasn't a single place left empty. Staring at these jade bottles that appeared out of thin air inside this big hall, except from the green-clad lady that was near the window, all the other clansmen, without the slightest exception, were shocked by this tremendous amount of pills to the point that they could hardly breath. Here are 1,283 bottles of the healing medicine, blood clotting powder. It isn't the best healing drug in terms of quality but compared to the Jiali clan's return spring powder, its effects are a lot more outstanding. Watching the stunned people in the hall, the black cloaked person carelessly introduced his merchandise. Xiao Zhan, shocked with mouth wide open, took a deep breath of the surrounding ice cold air, this is truly a big business.